one and we are live good afternoon adam or good morning yeah good morning to you adam i've said it before you are number one guest i've been chasing and and wishing to have as a as a person to talk to i appreciate as, that as, as you have changed my remaining habits and you have saved me lots and lots of money thank you well i'm hoping to be able to continue to do that today and uh i would like to apologize for not coming the last time but to be quite honest i just wasn't no ready at the time but i am happy and honored to be here today so good afternoon good evening or good morning to everybody uh, welcome to the live stream of host maria it is being shared on some other platforms that are family web family of host maria like ibf.lv as well you are most welcome to ask your questions to the one to the the main industry legend adam dicker adam could you introduce yourself please Sure. Um, my name is Adam Dicker. I was, uh, I've been in domains for over 20 years. I have uh, made mistakes like everybody else at the beginning. Um, I've learned along the way. Um, for about 18 of those years, I ran uh, dnforum.com, uh, built it up uh, from where it was when I took it over to maybe 1,000 users to about 600,000 users. Um, then wow. I... Then I sold the forum. I was also the uh, vice president of GoDaddy for about four years of their aftermarket and ran all the uh, services, including executive accounts, uh, TDNOM, which is uh, their auction site, the Wild West uh, accounts, uh, and everything, uh, quite a bit of other things. Wild West? What do you mean? Wild West that? is the domain reseller platform that uh, GoDaddy uh, uses where um, people can sign up. Uh, to become a reseller, they get their own version of a reseller site, and then it looks like you have your own shop and store to sell domain names. Do you use it yourself? Um, I have used it in the past. I actually still have a store now, but I haven't really been active in using it lately. I did back then. <laughs> <laughs> and which platforms do you prefer yourself? Um, for domains or? Yes, for, for domains. Uh, for domains, I like uh, Hexanet. Um, I like GoDaddy because uh, it has some things that I can't get. Uh, GoDaddy is still the best place if you want to sell domains to get them on their premium listings. Uh, you'll get the most eyeballs. It's always been the best place for that. But I like uh, Hexanet. Um, they've been good to me. There's a few other registers that I use. And sometimes, obviously, when you catch drops, you don't have a choice which register you use, at least for 60 days. Adam, how do you feel when you go to all those the main name Facebook groups and you see that pile of rubbish people are trying to sell? So that's a, a good question. Um, part of the problem is, and it still is today, is that people don't understand that domaining starts with choosing the right domain names to purchase. Um, and again, if you don't choose the right domain names to purchase, you're never going to sell them. So you can't choose domain names that look nice that look interesting you have to choose domain names based on a few categories so the first category would be is it something that a business could make its its business on and actually have it as its own business domain or is it something that you think um that is a, a sellable domain name is it short is it brandable but the main thing is if you're not going to keep it and build it out for a website or a business for yourself, then the main thing is, would a company be interested in it? And are there companies now currently that are out there that are using similar names with dashes with other things on them or, or things like that, like for parkour Canada or, or great parkour or, or parkour dash something, are there companies that you could sell it to and you need to make a list of all those companies that are potential uh, buyers for your domain name? So you need to do a bit of research, both when you, even if it's just $10, you need to do the research because otherwise you're going to end up holding it for a long time. I've held, I've held names for 15 years before I've sold them. Um, and I've held, there was a name recently that I sold that I bought, I think in 2003 or four. Okay. It was a really, sorry. Yes. It was a really good domain name. Um, and it was, called, it was md.ca, which is a two letter dot ca name okay MD. I, I went after about four different companies to try to sell it 
including uh, MD Financial uh, and a company that does all the medical uh, books here in Canada because all their stuff was MD this, MD that. Okay. I think I offered to them at the time at about 60 or 70 or maybe 85,000 and none of them were interested in it. But about a year and a half ago, Scotiabank happened to buy MD Financial and then Scotiabank said, well, it's time for you to get MD.ca. So then I got much more money uh, above well above uh, better than six figures uh, for the domain name that I would have sold for about five figures. This was about a year and a half ago, I think. So anybody that wants to check and go check and they can see that md.ca now points to MD Financial. And if you check archive.org, you'll see that I owned it previously and it's not a made up story. So how did they find you? Well, they found me because I was chasing them for quite a while. Um, if you want to sit and wait for somebody to come to you to sell a domain name, you're not going to sell much. The, the one thing that even if you can get a really good list of domain names and you've, you've figured out exactly who your clients are, if you don't actually pick up the phone and call them, you're not going to get a hold of somebody and you're not going to get interested in them. They actually have to be interested in your domain name and you have to get to them on the phone. Emails don't work anymore. They tend to go to spam or you don't know who to get to that's the right person to actually make the decision. The hardest part is finding who makes a decision, getting them interested in it, and then dropping a seed. You may not have to sell it right on that phone call, but like with MD.ca and there's other ones, you can uh, plant the seed and they'll come back to you eventually. 14 years is a long time to wait, but at $140 in re renewal fees, uh, for a premium name, I was willing to to wait that long, and uh, I paid. Quite honestly with you, I paid it uh, ten thousand dollars for it. I think back in ten thousand or three, ten thousand four. Wow! Because I figured I was going to do some sort of medical directory or some sort of things yeah. with doctors, and I tried a few different development things. Nothing panned out. So, in the end, I just uh, left it as part of the portfolio, and um, that's what I did, and it sold. And how many possible leads did you have? Oh, I had, uh, for that one, I think I only had about uh, eight to 10, but for other ones, I've had maybe 50 or 60. Um, I think I was even trying to sell it to uh, marijuana companies at the time because marijuana became legal in Canada. So I was looking for any marijuana dispensary who might be interested in MD.ca. And uh, I just couldn't get in their ear enough to get them to do it at the time. I probably started before it was legal trying to get it to them like just before as it was announced it was going to be legal and then it became legal and I couldn't sell it. But there's, uh, listen, everybody uh, fails at trying to sell a domain name. You only have to succeed once and you have to remember that there's only one of your domain names. So if somebody's calling you for a domain name, it's not like a house that's a cookie cutter and there's eight houses built by the same builder that look the same. If they want your domain name, there's only one place they can go to get it and that's to you. Whether they like you or not, it doesn't matter. They still need to buy it from you. How do, you, how do you build up the lead leads? How do you find the leads for two-letter domain names? Um, I'm particularly so, curious as I do have 10 uh, LL Belgium names. Okay. And 20 so, Latvian names. So one of the first things, if you're talking about short acronym okay. na names, yes. uh, one of the first things you can do is type in, um, let's say it's, um, I don't know, let's say it's uh, W-U. Uh, and it's in Belgium. So you type in W companies at the beginning with W companies, Belgium, and it'll give you a whole list of them in Google. Okay. Or you can build a tool like I've done myself that will help you find and extract them and go through it for you and help you filter those out and extract the who is information and everything else. That's not the same tool that I was going to show. That's something else. But no, I, I do have a tool that will do that. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview is because my approach to domaining at this point is quite different than it was before. I will be relaunching my site, uh, adamdicker.com, but the purpose this time is just to give away free tools to help people find uh, and use uh, domain names and filter lists. And I'm also going to be doing some quick uh, crash courses because I've picked up so much in the last four years, even on CCTLDs. So yes, your Belgium and your Latvian names, I can really show you how to sell them quickly. But there's a few others that I'm going to do as well. Those, All those courses will be free because I don't think that people should be paying for them. I may charge a dollar just to do an identity verification, and then you'll have access to all the cores the okay. courses, because I don't want to let people in that are, are non-believers or haters. I just want to be able to help one or two people. Uh, and that's good for me. 
Uh, one of the things that motivated me was a gentleman named Jason who uh, I, is, was out there. He reached out to me and he said, I've read all the crap online. I've seen it all. He said, you're still the guy I want to talk to. I want to learn from you. Can you please help me? And I've been helping him. And it's because of him that I decided to come back and do a couple more videos. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm going. I'm not going to advertise them anywhere. I'm just going to put them on my site. I'm not looking to be known as a top domainer again. I don't want to be in the ultimate peer group or or whatever it is. I just want to make sure that uh, some videos help people, and that's about it. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for uh, to speak at conferences. Uh, for me, I just want to help people learn the industry and. Uh, I hate to use the phrase, but uh, domains is a little bit quiet and a little bit boring right now. And a lot of people have told me that. And it's certainly not because I'm not in it. It's just because crypto came out and there's a lot of stuff going on with marijuana is taking a lot of uh, buying right now. Crypto, uh, the presidential race is going on. COVID is out there and it's distracting everybody. Um, now is the time to really get involved in online businesses and websites because of COVID and because a lot of things are closing down, they're, they're saying that it's going to be a huge increase in people moving their businesses online over the next little while. So if I can help somebody with that, uh, I'm happy to do that, but I will not be charging anything for anything. Yes. Why? Um, so you said you don't, you do not want to be known as top domainer or going into that tier, but there is nothing wrong in being there. Yeah, but sometimes uh, so like top some... domainers, and I would uh, my apologies, and I would I have to say thanks to domain Sherpa, just just because of domain Sherpa, so many people have been educated on the value of domain names, and many many huge sales, large sales that you top domainers have had, have happened just because the online community has been partly educated. And my mission with, with these interviews is as well to, to educate my part, my part of the world. Well, I really did enjoy uh, my time on Domain Sherpa. Um, I did have the top three videos on the site for almost the full length of the time that they were up there. I uh, had a How great to sell relation. sell a domain name? Yes, that was How number one. sell a domain name was always number one. Um, and there were a few others. But I do appreciate the relationship that I had with uh, Michael Seiger. Um, he's a great guy. He um, treated me well. I treated him well. And I think I helped him uh, build his business and he helped me probably uh, build the business, but more so become a better person. So I have nothing to but good things to say about Michael Seiger. I think one of the pain points for me in all this thing in the last four years is when uh, Michael and I kind of uh, drifted apart and stopped talking. I think that hurt more than anything else that was going on because I, I do and did consider him a friend and Things happen, and I understand, and that's just how life goes. Life's life. It yes. Is. So, who, so for everybody who is watching, uh, today we are having two parts. Part number one is how to buy and sell a domain name, and part two, there will be live questions to Adam. You can ask whatever you want in friendly manner to Adam, of course. Yeah, uh, and, and I'll happily and, answer all questions. Yeah, of course. And then we'll see how it goes and adam welcome back to the to the online world thanks <laughs> thank you very up. much it's been uh been about four or five years that i haven't done an interview and i've been uh, basically lying low and uh there's a pretty good reason for that um part of the the issue that uh, came up when there were issues uh, previously mentioned on uh, one of the forums uh, I could deal with the issues, I could deal with that, but then I had uh, a couple of, uh, we started a project and we had WebCorp started and we had four good people uh, started with me and then things didn't go as we planned as normally happens, as can happen with businesses. And then they went ahead, a couple of them went ahead and emailed customers saying that they were ripped off, they should ask for their money back, they were doing this. And I then they went, okay. uh, yep. <laughs> and then they went to uh, Shane Ballone and said, look, here's some stuff on them. Here's what we can tell you. And then poor Shane, who I also don't have any anger or animosity to, he was basically just made the uh, pawn and, and put everything up. And uh, then because it was on a competing forum with uh, DN Forum, the forum I ended at the time, I knew I didn't stand a chance. And unfortunately, a lot of people that uh, didn't like me started to pile into the um, thread 
And again, uh, my only uh, goal uh, today, one of my goals is to make sure that uh, the people in the thread know that I do plan on addressing uh, anyone that has a real uh, valid issue. I'm not going to address the people that I've never met, never talked to, never done business with. that just want to jump in and say uh, nasty things. There's no point in that. So, Okay, Adam, then let us take out the cat out of the box or how sure. we would say that. So what happened? Um, where do you want to start? I mean, what happened? Um, we So what happened was originally we started to do WebCorp. We were going to put together about, I guess, about 15 different businesses. We had project managers assigned to each business. Um, I think really what really happened was I took on more than I could handle, and I thought we could uh, grow bigger and faster. Okay. And um, we did it for about four months. And then we weren't making any money. And then there were uh, four people that were there. I think three. It was um, Linnell, uh, Mark, and Rick. And uh, I decided, and Simon was helping running the forum at the time, DN Forum, while I was busy with all this. And I decided after four months that I should do something nice and maybe offer them each $2,500 a month to uh, for their time and to help things go. And hopefully by then we would have some profit. But it didn't turn out that way. Um, and I was late to pay them, uh, as I often am, because I don't like to pay bills. Even my wife will tell you that. Um, and I was late, and then they got upset. And then after they were paid, they got a hold of – well, they were planning the whole time. I did pay them. Okay. The only one that didn't get paid, by the way, is Rick uh, Wedzinga, who happens to be one of the classiest guys you could ever imagine. Okay. He's the first guy from Netherlands, yes? Yes, he's first on my list to solve and take care of uh, as a current issue. He never said anything bad. He never joined in anything. He's a classy guy to the end. He was supportive with me. He was almost doing therapy with me as we went along and had to see all this stuff develop. So Rick is one of the first guys that will be definitely resolved. And then the other guys, they just, not all of them, but they, they decide to get a hold of Shane and start this thing. And like I said, they called customers and said, you've been ripped off, you've been ripped off. And then even customers that were going well started to panic. I had a guy who I was dealing with here in Toronto who ran a bunch of tea shops. I had just started doing SEO for him. He gave me a deposit. I was working on it. It was getting done. Okay. And then after he read all that, he thought it was fraud. So he went to the police, made a complaint. They oh. looked into it. They found out that there was nothing being done wrong and it was there was nothing ever came of it um, i have never been charged criminally with anything because there was no criminal intent behind anything yes i ran a business yes it has issues had issues and yes i'm looking to resolve those issues uh, that still exist uh, today uh, and i have the names of people that i'll be reaching out to over the next six months to 12 months to make sure that those things are resolved because it's the right thing to do not because I feel peer pressured or anything like that. Okay. I just think it's the right thing to do. I stayed away for over four years because uh, some of the people who weren't even involved in this decided to reach out to my uh, 13 and 15 year old daughters on Facebook and post on their walls and say that your daddy's a criminal. He's going to go to jail. He's this and he's that. And, and they scared the crap out of the kids. So it was at that point that I decided it's time to back away. Um, and because they don't understand now they're all older my kids are 25 23 21 and 19 so they're all older so it's a better time for me to go in and handle this and deal with it head on but having them worried about things that weren't going to happen and just because people were upset even over two three hundred dollars which doesn't matter it should be taken if it is an issue it should be taken care of but to call kids and get kids involved and scare them and tell all their friends and all this stuff it's uh, to me um it goes beyond where um, recovery from a business investment uh, should go. I've seen Adam. I've seen it over and over, and just human beings never change. There will well, be, there are communities, and there will be always titans in those communities that yeah. do support communities. Like I have so much respect towards Andrew Rosner, who took yeah. over the who took over the uh, the domain shop and and carries it on carries it on and does fantastic job and and once those titans slip a bit and we all sleep in our lives then some sorry assholes will come out and yeah they will destroy everything that these people have created yeah i've had dealings with andrew rosner even in the last uh, year or two 
some people thought I was having a fire sale when I got rid of uh, some uh, generic domain names. But really what it was, was smart people in business as you learn, you realize what direction you want to go and what direction you don't want to go. And Andrew was kind enough to purchase some of the names that I no longer had an interest in and no longer had an interest in developing a business on. So it was no fire sale, it was just called readjusting to what uh, your priorities should be. And people should do that. I've done that throughout my domain career. What I thought was good or what I thought I was going to develop turned into something else. So special thanks to uh, Andrew for that. Um, and yes, there's a lot of people, the, the higher you get up in the domain industry, like Andrew, like Michael, like uh, Rick and like other people, the more scrutiny you come under. When I was hired at GoDaddy uh, years ago as the vice president, the first day they told me to register Adam Dicker sucks and they did it on my behalf. And I was wondering why. And they said they do it for all of their executives uh, because no matter what you do, somebody else is going to register it and point something horrible at you and tell you uh, you're horrible and they hate you um, just for no reason. So that's how I learned early on that people are going to hate me no matter what, um, even if I'm only doing some good things. Some. some. Yeah, not all. Not all. I mean, there's still there's a lot of good people out there that even through the last four years have been talking to me regularly. And there's some that disappeared. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting business for sure. So, OK, uh, whoever is watching, you can start asking your questions, for example, there is a question like that. We will post them up on the screen on this in the second part. We have no time limits for this uh, for this conversation, and you are most welcome to dig into the knowledge, experience, and brain of Adam. So I saw a question pop up, and then it disappeared. Oh, would you like to answer it? It was about uh, yeah, sure. So do no new domain extensions affect SEO ranking? Um, as far as hurting other domains or other extensions, it's still, um, I, they don't have any benefit um, over other domain names. So uh, investing in your GTLDs, which I see a ton are dropping. There are some good ones. There are some that make sense. But what I'm finding is a lot of people, even with new extensions, are registering domains that don't make sense. And if you're just going to park it, it's not going to do well. If you're going to build it out into a reputable site and use something like Yoast, or uh, MathRank. By the way, MathRank is a new plugin. Uh, it's free and it's really good and it's probably the best SEO plugin out there. I have no part in it, no ownership in it, and it's uh, it replaces about five or six different plugins that you could use instead of using Yoast or other things that you would pay for. It's called MathRank. Okay. But uh, to answer the question, no, it's, it's not going to have any uh, effect on your SEO rankings. What is going to have an effect is the actual content that you put on the site. Okay, okay. So how would you say uh, a person wants to invest some money into domain names? Let us say he, he or she would start with $500. What would be your advice? So the first thing I would say is, and it's part of the reason why I wanted to uh, give away some free tools, and I'll show you a tool that I've built to help you. I'm going to share my screen now, if that's okay. okay. Of course. So this is a tool that I use. And I've shared it with only two other people up to this point. What it does is I've loaded the all the domains that are dropping from October the 23rd, which was a, a few days ago, as a test. And it loads all 68,553 domain names. And then I can choose which uh, uh, TLD I want, it'll load, here it'll show boxes for any TLDs that are actually in the list. So that's why you're not seeing .ca or some other ones, because if it doesn't have it on the list here, it's not going to show it. Then I can exclude dashes. So now I've got comms, I've got no dashes, no numbers. Okay. Then I can go over here to this column and I can decide how I sort it. So if I want to look for just dictionary words, the dictionary has been loaded. So you just select dictionary. And then you can look for one word, two word, three word, or what I call short domains. Short domains are four characters or less. And so you can do that. We can search now for two words. Uh, it's very fast. It'll, it did it already. Um, and it'll sort for them. Sorry, there's the two words very quickly. Okay. And you can see whatever it is, able need, able season. It uses dictionaries, Abbey Massage. Uh, and then if you decide you want to search for domains that just start with host or whatever, end with host or contain host, you can do that. If you want to look for just geographical ones, so it has a city somewhere in the domain name, you can do that. You get 
all these different ones, Brownstown Media, Cameron Brookshire, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Lynchburg Lacrosse. And if you're into certain ones, you can also sort here for chiropractors or whatever else you want. So these and then, are expiring soon domains, yes? Yeah, but you can do it with any list. I just happen to pick an expired domain list. You could do it with a name jet list. You could do it with your own domain list if you want to see something. You could do it with anybody's domain list you were thinking of buying. You could basically do and you could uh, basically fruit pick the choices that you want. The wow. last one is keywords. So if there's certain keywords that I like, um, yes. I believe in here there's hosting or something. But if there's keywords in here, I can search for it. Well, that's not supposed to happen. But I can search for it with keywords. It would show me the words with keywords and things like that. And then if I actually like one, I can double click it and it'll show me the keyword count on the right hand side over here with how many Google search counts exact matches it is for Aspen Jackson, 18,400. And then you can just go from there and you can make your list. I can add whatever I want. And then if I want to export them and take them to a register, I just hit export and there they are. And I can just copy and paste into my registrar. If I want to export them with the domain count, I can do that. If I want to filter them afterwards and decide I don't want this one anymore, I can do that as well. So it's just basically a tool to make it easy for you to find and sort through lists of names in a hurry and see what's actually there. I've added branding to it. That's the only thing I'm adding. There won't be any charge for the software. And again, you can also clear categories. If you don't like any of those, you can clear lists, you can clear all, and you can reload another list if you like. So this software is, is free. Yeah, I, I'll be posting it uh, next week. Uh, obviously, you can see it's got a couple of tweaks I need to make to it, but this software will be free uh, to people to use, and I hope it helps you guys find valuable domain names. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. I've found okay. a lot of them myself, and I've uh, a couple other people. I've only given it to two people to beta test to make sure that it's uh, working. They've come back with a bunch of features that I've added. Um, I'm going to be releasing a lot of different software uh, in the next little while. Uh, to help domainers. Again, it's all going to be free. I'm not trying to make any money off of it. I just think that any tool that I had made or that I'm using to help find something, sort something, or things like that, uh, I'm interested in. And other people would be too. So, and this tool, uh, is it is going through expired domains or expiring soon? Uh, you can do any list you want. So you could go take oh. uh, the next five days starting uh, tomorrow uh, of Okay. five days worth of domains and put it in or you could put one day's worth in you can it doesn't have to even be expired domains if you want to run a list of auction names and you want to see what has value it can run on any list of names and it'll tell you what has uh has, it has trap uh, exact matches and we're, i'm also adding cpc in there too so people can sort by either the search volume or cost per click cost per and it'll be a free tool google ads yes okay and so a person gets your tool so yep. he or she has five hundred dollars. Then what? So the first thing you should do really is um, figure out before you even start to buy a domain name. Figure out what your interests are. Figure out what you know. Um, obviously, if I'm a um, let's say I was a, a teacher or a lawyer, um, okay. I may know the value of some domain names. There's definitely different ways to look at domain names. Uh, I find it hard to teach people how to look at a list. It's probably one of the hardest things. And one of the things that I do with people is I take the same list. I did it just last week with Melanie. We looked at a list of dropping names and it just had, we looked at just the A's and I said, tell me which names you would think are valuable. She gave me her list. I did my list. We compared lists. And then I explained why the ones that I had, I thought had value versus the ones that she thought she had that didn't have any value. And again, when you're looking at a list, you can pick out the names that you think have value, but you also need to Google and take a look and see if there's a potential buyer or buyers for those domain names. You also have to think very carefully when you're buying domain names. For example, if people are looking for a dancing class, they're looking for a dancing class, one dancing class. If people are looking for usually a cremation or a will or anything else, there's certain industries where people will be looking for one uh, singular a domain name and some will be plural. So apple picking, you're not looking for apple pickings. You're not looking for, that's why some lawyers are harder to sell because if you've got the singular versus the plural, they want to be known as a singular. So it's easier to sell criminal lawyer than criminal lawyers because that has to go to a firm of criminal lawyers. And they may not all want to be identified as criminal lawyers. There's so many different things that you have to 
think about when you're registering a domain name, but the key is to find out the potential buyers for that domain name. It's not because it's a good combination. It's not because I like it. And please, one of the things that irritates me a lot is don't put the keyword after the uh, good part of the domain name. So don't buy Florist Chicago. Stick to the way you would say it. Stick to things that you would say and things that would also pass the radio test. So ideally, you want to uh, pick things that are easy to say and easy for people to spell if possible. So if you're going to do like uh, travel nurse, don't register a nurse travel because it doesn't make any sense. And people aren't looking for stuff that way. You may get indexed, but it's probably not going to be sold. So make sure you do that. Geodomains still have a ton of value. You can still sell those. Uh, acronyms are huge. Uh, one of the things I'm doing right now and I'm looking for more people with is investing in acronyms in other countries. So I've I've really been investing in, in a lot of acronyms in other countries. Um, and I had luck with one. So I bought uh, dc.ag off a drop. Okay. Um, I think I bought it in August for about $90 or $75. Within one month, it sold for 12,000 euros. AG? Uh, DC.AG. Yes. What is AG? Argentina? I think it's Algeria. Algeria? Okay. Yeah. I think. I'm not even sure, to be honest. The, all I know is I sold the domain name. But I, I bought it for 90 bucks, sold it for 12,000 euros. Uh, okay. One month later, you can verify this, and I'll send you. Uh, it sold through Sato, um, and I will send you the links uh, so you can validate it. Nice. Uh, so for okay. people that think that there's not money in other countries, in other domains, in other uh, worlds, you're wrong. The only real one that I've never seen any value in is the .us, but other countries are growing. There's a lot of uh, a lot of profit to be made in a lot of the countries, but also keep in mind the population of those countries. Some of them have all of their three, two, three, and four letter names available. That's probably not a really good investment. You want to go into harder markets where they're more sought after, like um, just other countries, like, um, sorry, Latvia, where you have most of them, I guess. Well, many of mine are in Latvia, yes, but my yeah, main one is the Belgium one, as the populations are totally yeah, different. Yeah, yes. and uh, there's 626 combinations of two-letter uh, domain names. So if you can get a, a, even a couple of them. Um, oh, the other thing you need to watch out for, if you're buying expired domain names, also take a look at um, how long they've had the domain name and what type of business they're in. In this COVID environment, you may find good names dropping from restaurants or things like that that haven't survived. Those are not necessarily great names uh, to pick up because because the restaurant's obviously gone and it may not. It's probably not coming back. Uh, a business you should stick to right now and something that you should try to develop out a site in. Uh, one of the things that happens to most of the uh, senior domainers is they don't stay in the domain industry forever. What they do is they build a successful business and then they go and they run that and they keep their domains and they continue to sell them on the side and they make extra cash that way. But your goal is to build a successful business that will actually work. Okay. Um, let's, let's, can we re rewind a bit? So sure. You, said you have this discovered GTLDs and two, uh, acronyms. So two letter, uh, three letter ones. Not probably, GTLDs, prob CCTLDs. C C C of course. So my apologies. Yes. No, no reason. So country, country ones. Yes. Uh, so you, so are you going CCTLDs or GTLDs, the acronyms? I'm going CCTLDs. CCTLDs. And which ones are the countries of your preferences? Oh, now we're getting a little tricky. Um, you know, everybody pretends that they will tell you all of the information and give you everything. Um, but I don't like to give out too much until I have wrapped up all that I want. Uh, it's a little bit selfish. But there are certain countries like Iceland uh, where okay. uh, the Internet is very popular. Oh, and, yes. Uh, you need to grab any two letters that you find or three letters and sit on them. There's also lots of regulations. So half, you have to half have, a year ago or a year ago, uh, like 10 two letter domain names, Iceland domain names were still available. I did post them on 27.b. Uh huh. And the tricky, sorry, the tricky part about Iceland is you have to renew them. Uh, there is no, there is no redemption time, I think. Yeah, Iceland were very, very specific about that. So, my apologies. No, no. There's a lot of countries that are harder to get. 
Uh, one of the things that I'm going to be building because I'm so into CCTLDs now, and there's a few good sites out there that list uh, where to get the best prices on each TL, uh, CCTLD and so on, but they don't tell you where to back order them. So I'm going to be building a really huge CCTLD site that not only tells you where to get them, but tells you how to back order them, where to back order them. And there's over 300 CCTLDs. Not all of them are good. I'm going to tell people which ones are actually worth investing in and which ones aren't. And I'm going to go even a step farther. Um, if there's people that live in a country that want uh, a partner, I'll, I won't say partner because that didn't work out in the past. What I'll do is I'll put up the money for the CCTLD domains. They'll hold them so that they feel secure and have them. And if we sell on them, we split the money on it. I don't think I could offer a better offer than that. So let, they let hold us, the assets. Let us, let us do the deal. Yeah. So. After uh, that's part of what I'm going to be doing. So you're in the country, you have access to them. I'm not a citizen of that country. I don't want to incorporate in every country, but I will definitely uh, sort of partner with you. I'll lay out all the money to buy them and you can hold them. So there's no risk to you. And I'll trust you in most cases to be able to sell them with me and split on it. Regarding the Iceland. Yes. My personal curiosity. I've, I was so tempted to register them. You should have. I, I, Let I, me tell you. Mm, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to hold myself. It's very I, hard. Uh, well, <laughs> so how many of them did you get? Yeah, I, uh, I have to look, to be honest with you. I mean, I've got uh, okay. I've got hundreds of uh, CCLT domains at this time spread out all over the place. I don't, uh, honestly, I don't really know how many. I know I've got at least probably like eight or 10, something yeah. like that. So probably all um, of that were available. I don't think I, I mean, I, I pay attention to, and that's the other thing. They all have different drop times. They all have different drop days. They all have, there's so many things to consider. I'm going to put that on my CTLD, CCTLD website. So you know what time, what day. And if you hit the button and it says available, like I've done a couple of times, you just grab it and go. Some of them are really cheap and some of them are really expensive. Like some of them are like a couple hundred bucks and some are only like 15 to 20 bucks. And it's not just two letters. There's three letters. Some, there's some good generics that are available. The other thing that I will tell you is that the reason I let go a lot of my generic domain names is because I found a better, faster way to make money, and it's not with generics. There's lots of uh, two- and three-word domain names, even in com, that you can pick up daily. And even if you sell them for a few hundred bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 2,000 bucks, you're making a lot of money. So it doesn't have to just be premium domains. I have, I've had great premium domains. There's no question about it. Um, and I've sold a lot of great premium domains, but I also know that there's markets for all kinds of things. And anybody that thinks it's too late to make money in the domain industry, you're wrong and you're not buying the right domain names. And it all starts with, buy, I mean, one of the things I'm going to be going through is how to buy the right domain name, how to sell the domain name, which most domainers don't know how to do. You have to be aggressive. You have to have some sales experience and you have to be willing to pick up the phone and not be shy. The other thing that domainers have a problem with, not all is how to know when to sell the domain name. What price is good? What price is right? Otherwise, you hang on to it too long. That sale goes away and you get nothing. And then eventually you have to just drop it or keep renewing it for no reason. So when to sell a domain is very crucial to know as well. These are all things that I'm going to be going through. Again, this will not be advertised on any other website. I'm just going to put it on adamdicker.com. If you want, come by. If you don't, don't come by. So I don't plan on uh, putting them out anywhere else. Okay, uh, can we dig a bit deeper into your strategy towards the Iceland? I'm, I'm, re I'm really curious. So the population should be what, 300,000? You know, it really depends. Um, some of the things I look at when I'm buying CCTLDs, and I'm not talking about two letters now, I'm talking about anything, is I look at the, uh, and again, some people put a lot of value on CPC. CPC is only important if you plan on keeping the domain name and building it out and doing something and putting some ads or something like that. I don't care about CC, uh, P, uh, CPC when I'm buying a domain name for resale. I don't care about it when I'm really buying it for a business that I'm going to create. I only care about it if I'm going to put ads on it and do something about it. Uh, traffic doesn't bother me either. I don't care if it's got traffic. What I care is that there's businesses that could benefit from owning this domain name versus the domain name they have or that they don't have a domain name at all. Those are the two most important things to consider. Is it going to be good for a business? And 
will a business be willing to lay out the money to buy it? What I think about a domain name, I learned early on, doesn't matter at all. Doesn't have any bearing on whether a company will buy it. None. Okay. So that was a long answer without an answer. What was the question? <laughs> Iceland. Iceland. So have, uh, eight to ten uh, LLs. So two letter. Iceland. IS, I IS guess, yeah. Not IS uh, domain names. Yeah. What is your strategy? Small country. One, one of uh, like layer one or tier tier. No. No. European Union. Still. Very smart. Uh, technology savvy country um, that cool. uses the cool. internet a lot. Yeah, that uses the internet a lot. That has a lot of people uh, investing in technology in that country, um, and it, it just it has a lot of value. I've heard a lot of things about Iceland. I've actually watched a lot of movies lately on, on uh, Netflix or something. The Icelandic movies. Apparently, the policemen there don't carry guns. I've learned, and in a lot of these crime shows, I guess they need them, but. <laughs> <laughs> Going back, no, it's it's more about, um, and that's the thing that's hard to teach. It's a gut feeling based on research. You learn what countries are growing. You keep up to the news. You read about, I mean, you can easily read about what countries are, are increasing their technology, what countries are going to have 5G, what countries are, are moving in the right direction of technology, and I've always been technology savvy. Whereas if there's a lot of domains, if there's only a few, also the number of registrations in that country has something to do with it. Um, based on the number of people. So obviously we've got, say there's 300,000 people and there's 500,000 domain registrations. That's a pretty good, pretty good uh, way to look at it. So, I mean, it really depends. And when I've been registering a lot of these CCDLDs, I've had to actually look up some of them myself because they weren't obvious to me which countries they were. Um, even though I was already buying it and I, I found it met my criteria, my five or six different uh, criteria, meaning was it a site before, a valuable, was it a good site, uh, did it have traffic, was it indexed, um, and there's a lot of different things to consider. So I'll look at uh, archive.org, I'll look at what it was, I'll look at uh, if it was, there's a lot of different things to see why uh, you can pick up a good expired domain name and have somebody come to you. I had no idea what DCAG was going to come to me. It was, I think, one of the first, uh, one of the first few that I, I picked up that I looked at, and, and uh, I think three, four days after I had it registered, I had an offer from Sato uh, for that domain name. And again, they were trying to get it for a few hundred bucks, and I'm like, no, yes. I don't, I don't really want it for that. And here's the price, and they, they bought it. I, I, I think I looked once afterwards to see what it was, but I rarely look back at domains after I sell them. So, and that was uh, an end user? No, no, this was a, a domain that I picked up from a drop. Yes, well, uh, but a, an offer was made from end user or- Oh, end user, user, yeah, sorry, yes. User. From uh, end user, but they came through Sato. So it was the Sato rep that uh, reached out to me. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to know, by the way, when you're selling a domain name is, uh, a lot of times if a, it's a lawyer that reaches out to you, um, you can definitely tell that it's pro you probably got a pretty good uh, domain because the company's got a lawyer involved. Um, the other thing that I do is I don't really answer Gmail or um, any sort of fake email addresses. I always tell them, if you're serious, email me from your business. Uh, if you want me to take you seriously, email me from your business email. And a lot of them will do that because I won't answer the, the Gmails or the other ones. And what about AOL? The old I, I, if it's not I've noticed, a... Uh, I've noticed some really, really like dinosaurs, proper dinosaurs. Yeah. I, stick I, to old values. No, I, I really I, do like their AOLs. I think I'd be embarrassed. To, I was watching a movie the other day. Uh, it's a TV show as well. It's called Younger. It's on uh, Netflix. And this woman is trying to pretend, uh, has to pretend she's older because they won't, the young people won't hire her for a job in her 40s. It's a funny show. And uh, she had to pretend she was uh, old, younger. So she changed her AOL address to a Gmail address. And she <laughs> learned, got on Twitter and Instagram and a bunch of other things. So, no, uh, that goes back to... Uh, like uh, got mail, that kind of thing with Tom Hanks back in those days where it was AOL or something. But um, no, we're not going back to GeoCities and, and AOL. So, uh, but a lot of times the best thing to do is if you're not sure who it is, because people hide behind the aliases, they register new names and uh, new Gmails to try to find out whether you'll sell this domain name. I get all the time. I won't answer that. I tell them to reply from their corporate email or their real email address if they actually want to put in a serious offer. What would you tell... Uh to younger, less experienced than domainers, 
who start buying buying the main names they just like the name yeah they have some income and they keep buying them and buying them and that was the thing i added in the bottom and avoid get burned so the biggest thing i can tell you is uh to do your research uh watch a lot of uh videos from people that you respect um research everything about domain names you don't need to invest a lot of money to get started as a matter of fact the less you invest the more you'll learn because you'll have to sell those domain names. So maybe pick out five to 10, spend 50 to $100. If you can't sell the, the five domains that you thought you could, that's a good lesson right there. And you need to refocus and watch more videos and do more research. Uh, you don't need to uh, have $10,000 in domain names to learn a lesson. What you need to do is pick five that you think are amazing names. Pick one a day for five days and try to sell those. Make lists of potential buyers. Reach out, write your email to the companies. Keep it short, find the right person, and that's hard too. Um, and also make sure you include uh, a few things in your email. Uh, let them know what the value is to their company if they did have this domain name, how they could get users, leads. They don't have to change their domain either. They could just use it to bring in leads. If there's a chiropractor out there who just wants more clients, uh, you may be able to help get him leads with this, whatever city it is that you're in that could be uh, Vancouver chiropractor, whatever. They don't have to change their brand from Dr. Smith chiropractor to whatever if they don't want to. But again, if you can't sell the first five domains that you think are good, what makes you think you're going to sell the next thousand or the next hundred? You have to be able to uh, pick up the phone. Uh, you have to be able to create value. Uh, you're not out there explaining the value of a generic domain. You don't have time to educate them, but you do want to let them know that uh, there is some time constraint on it, um, so you have to place some urgency in it. Otherwise, they're just going to take, the, if it's an email, they're just going to junk it. Um, you can tell them you have a, you're calling a few different companies. You can um, we'll do what I did to sell pink slip loans a long time ago. I, it was pinksliploans.com. I called the guy that owned pinksliploan.com. I told him that, and I did some research. I found a competitor of his down the street who was doing check cashing or something. I said, this guy is interested in this uh, name. I don't think it uh, makes sense to s give it to him since you already own the singular. I'd like to do the right thing, and I'd like to see if you're interested in buying it instead of giving it to your competitor. And I think he spent $8,000 on the name, and I sold it. So you have to use some salesmanship. You have to use some uh, common sense, and you have to... Uh, you have to sell and, and you can use LinkedIn to find out who the right people are. If you send emails or you call the wrong person, use that wrong person to get to the right person. So if I call uh, Johnny and Johnny's in accounting and I know Johnny's not the right person, I say, Johnny, I, I'm sorry, I understand you're not the right person. Can you tell me who would be the right person? And then you get the name of the right person. You go to the right person and you say, I was speaking to Johnny in accounting and he said, you'd be the person to talk to. And then, you can get in that way. There's lots of different ways. You can also look up people. On, don't use contacts on the websites because most times they're webmasters or it's just a contact or the general mailbox. You're not going to get anywhere except spam. But the best thing to do is to make a phone call. And don't, if you don't want to get burnt, don't buy too many domain names uh, at first. Like I said, if you think you've got a really good one and you try hard to sell that, even if it takes you weeks and weeks and all you do is learn things, You'll learn. You'll learn how to get past the gatekeepers, or you'll learn that you're not cut out for this business. At least it won't cost you ten to twenty thousand dollars. I'm rubbish at sales, and that's, I, I am rubbish. Well, then find somebody who's trying, not rubbish with sales. I'm trying to improve it all the time. Well, yeah, or but find you somebody have who to know your weaknesses. Yeah, and and yeah, find so. somebody who uh, you can work with. It's better to get fifty percent of something than 100% of nothing. So if you have somebody, a neighbor, somebody who's in sales, I mean, you don't have to know domain names to know how to sell. Sales is, a, is you either have it or you don't have it. You have the gift of gab or you don't. So not everybody does. That's why there's a lot of uh, computer geeks out there that don't like to talk to people and just sit in front of their computer all day. And not everybody can go out and sell and, and, uh, and they can't work a computer either, some of them. So not everybody is born with all the skills that are needed to do every job. So you would say phone over, over an email. Definitely phone over an email. Before we go over the phone, uh, can we cover quickly this a simple thing like email template? Subject. <clears throat> so a lot of people don't like to put prices in the uh, subject, uh, or not in the subject, in the email itself. But there's no point in going out and chasing a company or a person 
like a locksmith, um, Jimmy's locksmith, just making something up, a small company. Um, a lot of times uh, what is best to do is to uh, build a little quick site on it or use a lead generation site. There's a couple companies out there right now, if I can think of it before the end of the interview. It's like $10 to build a site and they do it all for you. And it's automated. And then you just come put in the company's information and you have a full site already done and customized for a company that has a crappy website and you show it to them. And they're like, holy crap. And then you tell them it's like 300 bucks or 500 bucks with the domain name and you sell those all day. Um, those are very good ways to go after people wow. that you actually put work into it, but okay. it's completely customized. It has their address, their phone number, everything else. All the content is related to their industry and it's already done for you. So, um, and they even have email templates that you can send out that say, hi, I'm sending this to you. And they've got five or six different ones you can send out. The key is to get somebody's interest in an email template. I tend to, um, you t everybody tends to get a lot of lowball offers. One of the keys is to uh, rule out. Once you get interest, you can rule out by putting a price range after the initial offer to see if they're actually in the ballpark. So if you want to sell a domain name for $5,000, and yes, you get three or four people interested, okay, here's what we're looking at. Please feel free to make an offer and put a time frame in because we're talking to three other companies and then you can go that way. But again, your best negotiating skill is over the phone. I've had lots of domains come in at a few hundred dollars or $5,000 and end up at 75 or $80,000 with negotiation. Nobody's going to give you their best price right off the, the hop. The other thing that is helpful is if you are putting them on landing pages, go ahead and put buy now prices on some of them. Um, if you actually have a buy now that you think is fair and reasonable, uh, and I'm not saying it has to be fair and reasonable. I'm saying that at least it will filter out people that will go in and, and look at your domain name and, and decide. So for example, on some of the two letter or three letter domain names, I'll go price them at uh, $10,000 if that's what I want for them. And Are then I don't have to. of your existing. Uh, just, oh, um, for a lot of them right now, I'm just using Sato and Uniregistry. And regarding a unique landing page. Um, it's not very not unique. Problem. No, I'm not using really any unique landing pages. I'm mostly using using Sato or Uniregistry right now. And actually, um, I just had one or two sales come through. I think it was one through Uniregistry, but it was a $5,000 or $3,000 sale, sorry. Okay. And it was for business of a domain name. Don't want to mention the domain name, but it's something I'm no longer doing. So it sold and I was happy to get rid of it. Okay. So maybe it is smarter to put it on Sato. Or still, you are saying for for lower value domain names to put up a, a cheap landing page. Uh, you can, and one of the things that I, I like to do that uh, people never cut on to for some reason. I mentioned this many times. Let's say I put a domain up in three or four marketplaces. I'll put it up with different prices, keeping in mind the commission structure. One may be fifteen, one may be ten percent, one may be twenty percent, but I'll always lowball one. So let's say I put it on. Um, uh, unit registry for five thousand okay. dollars. Maybe I'll put it on Sato for thirty eight hundred dollars. Maybe I'll put it on Afternick for five thousand dollars. Somebody will go to all three, um, and then when I say sorry, I won't go lower than five thousand. Then they'll go and hit the buy now on Sato for thirty eight hundred and think they got a deal and think I don't know about it. It happens. You'd be surprised how many really? times that happens. <laughs> so sometimes and everybody's you can, happy. Everybody's happy. I'm happy because I only wanted $3,800 for the domain name. If I got 5,000, great, uh, but it's just the way it goes. So um, not trying to outsmart yourself, but understanding that the way that goes happens. I've got a guy now I'm dealing with. It's Area Rug is the domain name. It's a CA again. He's been at me for three months in a row. He started at 1,000, next month 1,500, next month 2,000, next month I think he's still at 2,000, but He's given up for a while, and I, I laugh with my wife that he'll probably be back next month at 2500 And I think I priced it at 4500 just to get rid of it because I'm not going to run an area rug store. But he refuses to go up to 4500 and I don't need the $2,500 to sell it to him. And it's at this point, I'm just waiting for him to go up because he's already gone up three or four times. And then I told him, I've got area rugs.ca as well if you're interested. So. But he only wants area rugs. So uh, there's all kinds of people that you meet. And all some people are like, some people want something for business and it's a reasonable price and they can validate why it's that much to, to, for the branding of their business. They just hit buy now and they go. And so, what about that guy, uh, 
I, I'm sure you have offered him split payments. Who? Uh, to that guy who wants the the rugs, the main name, the Canadian one. I, no, I, I really didn't. You know, there comes a time, and a lot of domainers will understand this, and maybe I fell from my own trap. After a while, somebody gets on your nerves so much that you almost don't want to sell it to them. So I think I have to snap myself out of that mindset and think, well, I'm not running an area rug store, so $2,000 for a name that I'm not going to use is maybe worthwhile just selling it. I mean, I've lowered it, I think, to 3000 for the guy, and he hasn't bitten. But uh, yes. okay. sometimes we fall into our own traps as domainers, and we think that what we have is more valuable than it is. But if you're not going to use it and you're just paying reg fees on it, you can go ahead and buy other domain names that you may use. And buying strategies from domainers will change, should change, day to day. In other words, what's hot today is not hot yesterday or last year. For example, one of the best things that domainers can do right now is set up a local takeout directory for takeout food for your little city. And I don't mean big cities like Toronto. I mean little cities and little suburbs. Set up a directory, add all the restaurants, get a hold of them, tell them you're trying to help promote local business. We're trying to find out which restaurants are open, doing still doing takeout. We want to put you on the list. Okay. Give us your hours. Give us your information. We'll give you a link. It's Delivery $10. Time. Delivery times. Delivery times. Whatever you can get, it's $10. What business owner isn't going to put 10 or $20 in to get his business out there in a time like this? And then go ahead and go one step further and put the directory in all of the local Facebook groups where they're talking about your city and they're talking about things like that and say, look, we're helping the community. Please help and visit the local restaurants and keep them alive. Big business right now. And you can do it in multiple cities. Have you done so it you, yourself? Uh, yeah, I have done it. Can, can you show uh, us? Uh, I, I can't show you now because I don't have, have it open, but I, I can uh, send, post. A, I'll post an example on uh, adamdicker.com if people actually want to see it. But basically all you're doing is building a local business directory, um, and it's, it's out there to do. And there are uh, many directory scripts as well. Yeah, one of the best ones uh, is by Jack Hopman because he will actually build out the restaurant for you. Uh, he actually was the one who gave me the idea. He's got a team that basically you just give them your city. They'll go in and extract all the restaurants that are there, and they'll build it for you within, I don't know, a week or so. And I don't have any share in Jack Hopman's company either. Everything that I'm doing from here on in is free knowledge. It's free. If you don't like it, don't listen. There's nothing else I can do for you. Okay. That's cool. That's Adam, it. Um, how, uh, what would you say? What is... What are the safe amounts of the main names a person should hold? That's honestly, it's really hard to say, and especially a time like this. It, it needs to be what you can afford, um, and it needs to be what you think is a good domain that has potential to sell, and what you can manage to sell. So, if you're only selling five to ten domain names a year, there's no point in buying five thousand of them unless you're investing, because you're going to be renewing a lot of them. The other thing is, there's a lot of things right now where a lot of domains are dropping because of COVID. A lot of people are prioritizing food and medicine over domain names, and that's perfectly understandable. So basically, you almost have to treat it like stocks, where it's you invest it, um, you're, you hopefully you sell something on it, but you don't need it short term. Um, it's not something that you're going to get a quick return on. It's not going to be like Bitcoin, where it goes from three thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars and you can cash out right away um we can see that bitcoin is down around thirteen thousand uh, it's it's volatile because you have to get the right buyer and that's the part that's on you it's not on um me to wait for somebody to come in because i would say that 95 percent of the domain names i sold is because i've done outbound marketing you are not if you think you're just going to come in and you've seen all the the Rick Schwartz is out there who have sold these million dollar domains or other oh, people every, and have had great loss, Rick. Yeah, but remember, yeah. domains are like a lottery. Not everybody hits the grand prize. Some people just get free tickets and that's okay. But don't go in thinking that every time you're gonna win the free ticket or you're gonna win the, the bonus prize or the, the second prize. You still have to there's still a lot of money made in domains in the one thousand to five thousand dollar sales range. Don't be too greedy. Lots of people think that their domains are worth more than they are. And that's not true. But again, the biggest thing is to make sure, and I've done this before and I'll do this for people if they want, feel free to tag me. I'll go through a list of domains. 
I'll do a, a portfolio appraisal for you, but it's not going to be a bullshit portfolio appraisal. I'm going to tell you exactly what's good and what's bad, and it's up for you whether you listen. I'm going to give you an honest appraisal on if I think a domain is good or if I think a domain is bad. I'm not going to price it, but I will lead you hopefully into directions where you can sell it or I can help you find some buyers for your domain names. I am not brokering domains. I'm just doing this to help people. I uh, have no interest in brokering other people's domain names. I have many of mine. And that's how, many a, domains, how many domain names have you got? Uh, I've got them all over the place, thousands and thousands all over the place, and I continue to buy. I'm absolutely sure you know the total number. Absolutely. I'm absolutely sure I do too. You're a but, man of uh, numbers. I, I'm absolutely sure I do know the number, but uh, I can tell you this. Like any domainer, big or small, I've been trimming the portfolio over the years and buying better quality names than I had. So, I mean, there's names that I have that I'll probably never be able to sell, like baker.ca or something where it's you know, with last name Baker or you think any Baker is ever going to want a really big domain name? I doubt it. But there's, I have things like gardeners and other stuff that I keep. I'm really invested in the CA. It's been a great market for me, very profitable. Okay. Um, and I really enjoy it, but I do like other CCTLDs as well. So if you want me to review a few lists, and and lists of names, fine. Don't send me a thousand. But if you want me to look at 10 or 20 and tell you what I think the best one to uh, start with, go ahead and do that. My other I think people, you are you are really good with avoiding the questions. Okay, what's the question? <laughs> go back. What was the question? How many domains have you got? Um, I've got quite a few. That question I will have to uh, plead the fifth on. No problem. No problem uh, at all. Uh, what is uh, do you more still than hold... most people? Let's put it that way. <laughs> do you still hold limo.ca? I do, yeah. Yes. Why does it take so long? A you know fantastic what? Fantastic domain name. Uh, you know what? Uber, Lyft, I don't know. It's it's one of those, but names. that is not their market. Limos are not their market, <laughs> yeah. But uh, there's only if I mean, you would think that there's lots of limo companies out there that would be interested, but that's one of the businesses that I'm sure is suffering at the moment. Um, it, it ha I've had it for I don't know, probably 10 plus years. Okay, um, originally I set it up as a referral site. But then I got calls for um, parties and, and banquets all over the place, and I don't have any limos. And it was like, okay. no, the domain's just for sale. But people were trying to book stag parties and bachelorette parties and everything else all across Canada. And, and I couldn't find a partner where it's worth me partnering that had limos everywhere. So Absolutely. I'm not doing much with it. There's a lot of really good ones like that that I have that I can't do anything with because I just have to either find a company or wait till somebody comes to me. I think in Latvia we had a limo.lv and I personally knew the guy. Mm -hmm. We were almost friends. And he, he had a great business and mostly just because of his domain name. Well, I have, a, the very I, beginning end. I have a really good friend who's in the limo business who does all the limo mm -hmm. for the sports teams and takes okay. them all over the place, but he doesn't have the money for it. So what can I do? So Split payments. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to think. Of like I, I could do split payments. I've done it before. Yes. I did it for. Uh, I've done it once where I got split payments from somebody through escrow.com and it worked out fine. There was no issues. Um, I also like the leasing stuff that's coming out. Although I haven't done any leasing on domain names, I think that's a good way to make money. Um, you could do lease to own. There's lots of things that uh, could do, but uh, I haven't done everything. That's for sure. Hmm. What about Rams? Ah. So it's no, it's no joke. I do love animals. I've owned probably about 25 different uh, animal domain names. I was, uh, 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 the companies went after me twice, once for elephant.com and once for pig.com on uh, dispute uh, resolution stuff. Both times they lost. Uh, elephant, we know the story. The big insurance company in the UK had to end up buying it from me uh, for a lot more than their original lowball offer because they lost the case. Um, and that went well. I have, I had seals, giraffes. I mean, I still have lots of, uh, animal domain names. Uh, if Rams sells, it sells. If it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. There's nothing I can do for it. There's about five possible suitors for that name. And if any one of them wants to step forward, they can. I would. There are, defi there are definitely hot, hot leads who, uh, who are there. Yeah, but I don't. I can't control the. They've been approached. They've approached me. We just couldn't come to. I mean, I think I had an offer um, last year. It could have been from a fan or somebody who wanted to buy it as well, 
and uh, his offer was reasonable, but less than I paid for it at the time. So, no, sorry. But uh, no, I still have it. I still own it. Um, I know there's been rumors that I've sold it a few times. I've been involved in lots of rumors with lots of things. Um, none of them are true. I still have it. Can you give me the story of DNF, the main name forum? As uh, I just, for me, there were only two domain name forums. Yeah. DNF and, yes, and Name Pros. So Name Pros was started uh, by Ron, who was originally a DN forum member. It was before I took it over, I believe. He didn't like what was going on, and he started Name Pros. Um, then it became, it was a free forum at the time. It was competing with DN Forum. Uh, when DN Forum had, I think, a couple hundred users, not sure exactly. I bought DN Forum off of Greg. Um, I turned it into a, a good, uh, profitable uh, business for myself. And then, again, when all of this uh, nonsense stuff uh started and I started to get bad mouthed everywhere. It didn't help the forum. Uh, so I decided at that time that it was better off if I uh, left uh, DN forum in better capable hands. Um, and I did that. And um, I still think it was a right move. Um, like I said, I have some issues that I'd like to resolve uh, with some people. Um, and I don't know what uh, is going on lately with DN forum. I haven't been on it. Uh, I don't like to go back to sites. I think I've been on it. They can check themselves maybe three or four times in the last four years. So that was that's the story of DN forum, and we can. So you bought. Uh, I'm not. I'm not looking into the problems or something. I just want to understand the story. So, uh, is 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 the number public? How much did you pay for DN forum? Uh, I think I talk about numbers. Oh, I can talk. Well, I, I don't think I can talk about what I sold it for. I can talk about yes. what I bought it for, but I don't honestly, I don't even remember what I bought it for, but it wasn't, wasn't that much. Um, I called Greg Ricks on the phone and I said, I'd like to buy it. And he thought I was joking. And I think he hung up on me the first time. And then the second time <laughs> okay. he thought I was serious and we did the transaction. Honestly, I, I can guess, but I don't know. It may have been $30,000 or something like 35. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'd ha honestly, I'd have to look because we're talking uh, about 17, 18 years ago. So and, and I sold a lot of domains and bought a lot of domains in between then and now. And although my eyesight might be getting worse, it's gotten a lot easier to see through people over the years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we, and we still have a lot of mistakes to be done in the future. Mm -hmm. So, and you said, uh, when you bought it, it had only a couple hundred. Members. Yeah, it was more of an, uh, well, there were, the domain industry wasn't so big. I think I may have bought it around 2003 in that area, two or three. And the domain industry itself wasn't wasn't big. I mean, you could still get all kinds of really good domain names in the drops or, or the people that had them or things like that. I mean, at one point, I had uh, over 20 two-letter.coms. So... <sighs> There was. No, uh, we should stop here. <laughs> no, wait. Listen, it's part of history. We all. I, I also had Indiana.com and a whole bunch of other ones. I made mistakes. I had SpongeBobSquarePants.com. I had DisneyStores.com. Eventually, there were no charges there. I eventually just gave them back to the companies um, that had them. Um, but no, I mean, you make mistakes as you go, and obviously, that was one of the first ones I learned was not to hold on to trademarks, and I let the trademarks go just before. The company started clamping down on them. Uh, to tell you how bad it was, I had Microsoft Works. I had a whole bunch of them, <laughs> and I didn't. Uh, I let them all go uh, before uh, trademarks were a real thing with intellectual property. So, so what would, what would be your best advice to a person who gets that first email? Oh, uh, the best advice would be do your research before you buy. There's still people buying and selling domains that are trademarks, and they're they're just asking for trouble. Even on the forums or the blogs, I see people asking for, or even on the Facebook groups, which are, unfortunately, they're just junk. I mean, it's just the most worthless pieces of domains are put up there uh, for people to buy that make no sense to anybody. Um, and it doesn't make any sense. My advice to people would be never register anything that has a trademark. Uh, especially if it's a trademark in the country you live in. So 
Um, that's my first advice. My is don't register any trademarks of, of products or services in countries you live in. The second one is don't register trademarks of any kind anywhere. There's nothing you can benefit from it and the fines are massive. So always avoid trademarks and you can't blame stupidity. You have to do your research. Part of the reason why GoDaddy and other companies don't stop trademark domains from going on their sites for sale is because then they would have to know trademark law and trademarks of every country everywhere and run them all through a database. So it's easier to just say, I don't know, it's, and they make it that it's a responsibility of the seller who posts the domain name. But uh, definitely do not buy or sell anything with a trademark. And there are certain trademarks that we've known for years are highly protected. Uh, and you'll get a letter the same day. Nothing with Super Bowl, uh, and nothing with any AOL-owned company, Time Warner, CNN-owned companies. Any of those things, those were the first ones to come after people in the olden days. No Microsoft trademarks, nothing like that. Don't even use short forms. Don't use MS anything. Don't, don't, don't take chances. And if you have them, every registrar that I know of has a delete button where you can go in and delete them from your account. That would be the smartest thing you could do. And I certainly used that delete button years ago uh, as I was learning. It may look great. Oh, wow. Uh, Texaco gasoline is available because they're using Texaco. But boy, it's not a good idea. I remember I had Microsoft misspelling with, with uh, .com as well with yeah. one missing letter. Oh, deleted it immediately. Yeah. Long, long, long years ago. And people... I I haven't seen that much of people trying to sell uh, what were a big thing back in the day, which is domain typos, which were actual typos of brands or websites. Um, that's fine. It's okay to own a product. It's okay to own a generic product uh, like chalk or, or crayons. It's not okay to own anything with Crayola. Uh, maybe crayons is now a trademark too. Who knows? Uh, but you can own the product. You just can't own anything to do with the company. Like you can't own Kleenex, even though that's why everybody calls it as Kleenex. It's pretty much a, a protected brand. So you have to be careful on what you buy, what you own, and uh, do the smart thing. Okay, so uh, DN, uh, DN Forum. Yeah. 300 members, you paid, let us say, 30 May have been more. three or 400. I don't remember. Yes. Okay. Okay. 400. Still, that's a lot of money. Personal ego? Why did you buy it? So I had been, um, there was a guy, I'm trying to remember his name. I think it was Fred. He got me interested in the domain industry and then I was hooked on it. And then when I like to learn something, I like to go all in. And uh, I looked around and I think it was Fred. That's no, not Fred. Um, I'll remember his name afterwards. And he uh, introduced me to domains and he said, if you want to learn about domains, he said, go to DN Forum. That's the best place to learn about it. Um, and I went to DN Forum. I loved what I saw. And I thought, this is a business I could really get into. And then I, uh, I subsequently bought it. We know the story. I bought it off of Rick. But uh, it perked my interest that there was money to be made in something while I slept. Now, I've already did that because I ran an ISP service before that. So I know people were signing up for internet service. Uh, providing while I was sleeping. I actually had a T1 right in my house. And this is back in like 2000. This is a long time ago. And uh, I was selling internet service. So I started with that. And then uh, actually it was a bulletin board service I started with. And then the internet came out and I started to get into that. And then I saw the value of domain names. And I didn't really know the value. And then one night they deregulated all the CA domain names. So there was a time before where I, if I had a company called Power Windows and I was incorporated in Ontario, I had to get powerwindows.on.ca, which was my company. Okay. And if I was incorporated federally, then I could get powerwindows.ca. So they deregulated it one night and I stayed up that whole night registering mostly the wrong domain names, but I got a, a few hundred. Um, they were $35 a year and you had to pay for two years. So 70 bucks a name. I got a whole bunch of them and uh, it was before trademarks and it was interesting. I picked up things like Cineplex, stuff that I shouldn't be picking up. And, uh, but they eventually Cineplex made a deal with me to give me uh, two free movie tickets for, I don't know how many years or life or whatever it was, it was years. And they paid me $5,000 plus the two free movie tickets Luckily, they didn't know about trademark law then, or they would have just taken it from me. So that's how I got started into it. And what I try to tell people is, 
after you get into domain names, you see the world differently. Everything for me and since I started getting into DN Forum was about, can it be a domain name? Is it something people would want? Is it something I could do? And sure, I registered a whole bunch of dumb ones, but that was the learning process. But eventually I started to figure out what's good and what sells. And then I started to, to get sell names and use that money to buy more names and keep going that way. And it grew. I didn't have that many names to start with. And uh, then at some moment you had DNF as well. And I was very surprised to see that DNF.com doesn't resolve. Now or then? No. Not, uh, I, was, I was checking it just recently. And oh. it was not resolving. I was so surprised. So did it get split off or? Um, I only know what I did with it. I sold, uh, I had DNF and DCG.com at the time. I yeah. sold them both. Uh, into, I bought them for, I don't know how much, but I sold them each for $85,000 and unloaded them. But that was a while ago. So it was $85,000 was uh, better than, uh, I don't know how much they sell for today for a three letter, but probably less or, or more than that. But I was happy with it. Uh, originally, I was going to use it for branding, but then as my interest in DN Forum faded, um, as I was the way things were and what things were going on, I sold it. Well, if somebody wanted to build up another competitor, possible competitor for the domain name industry, then also... Well, it'd be a trademark. Uh, they couldn't do it. Because yeah, I, I did trademark DN Forum and DNF at the time, and the current owners of DN Forum own that trademark. And I, I'd also like to mention that uh, Rob Monster. Uh, Rob Monster is one of those great guys who reached out to me about six to eight months ago asking if I would ever do Adam Dicker version 2.0. And him and I had a great talk. And he was, uh, he was just a, he is and was a very good uh, person to talk to. And I appreciated him reaching out to talk to me. And uh, he kind of stirred my juices a bit to, to get back into a little bit. And then lately I've had quite a few uh, emails from people asking if I've done any videos and a couple people, I have a three day course that I did before eight hours each day. So it's like 24 hours of Adam speaking about domains. Um, he asked if he could watch it. That's a Jason. And, and uh, you know, it kind of pumped me up and got me back into to thinking about domain names and uh, not that I ever stopped because I've been buying and selling domain names right through this whole four years. Um, but um, again, the goal is to build a business and have domains come in and sell them and be surprised. Oh, I got $5,000 for this. Great. It's a buy now or something else comes in. But the goal of every domainer should be to build a uh, valuable business from the knowledge you have and still build and sell your domain portfolio. Should domainers develop their domains? Um, so after um, you're failing at this, um, I will tell you, um, I've had successes and I've had failures. The thing is, uh, and what I did that uh, I shouldn't have done is don't try to uh, build and do too much and don't build too many sites at once. Um, you have to focus on one, build it like you would a, a, a baby and grow it from birth right up until uh, the end of its lifetime or whenever you decide you want to sell it, um, earn money from it. Nobody's going to sell you a business or a domain that's really making money. And if they tell you they are, if they post a domain name and they say it's making $40,000 a year, but they only want $20,000 for it or they want 40, it doesn't make any sense. That's not proper EBITDA and it just doesn't work that way. So build your business, get your income to where you can support your family off of your business and all the extra income you have coming in, it's gravy once in a while. And it's nice. Sometimes it's a little gravy. Sometimes it's a whole house full of gravy. And that's the best way to do it. So I would say build out. There's nothing wrong with putting a WordPress site on sites that you're looking to sell either. Um, it doesn't really help you with the sale, but it gives them something to look at. If you do the customization, then it makes it more personalized. I've done a lot of work and I've got a lot of tools that I use, probably about 40. Okay. They will tell me everything from if a site is mobile ready, if it's not listed in Google, if it doesn't have, uh, uh, if it's not a HTTPS secured site, there's all kinds of ways in to figure things out. But I also look at the size of sites. And if it's a small site, it looks like it's been built in uh, 1999 by a front page or something like that, or it's just a site that I go to and it's ugly, then I'll go ahead and I'll reach out and I'll, uh, 
I'll make them a new site for free. I'll give it to them and uh, I'll create a relationship and uh, sell them the domain name with it or just sell the lead generation site with it. So there's lots of different ways to get into a conversation. You have to be willing to get into those conversations. If you're not willing to get into the conversations, you're not going to sell anything, except if you get lucky and you have a whole bunch of premium domain names and somebody comes to you and says, I want to buy this, but you still have to know how to negotiate. So there's no part of sales uh, that you can not know and think you're going to be very successful. You're always going to, if you don't know how to negotiate, even if you do know how to negotiate, you could always be leaving money on the table. And that's something you have to learn in the thing is how to not lose uh, money. Oh, by the way, Adam, uh, I might forget it. Uh, from your uh, from your profile on I Can Wiki, yeah, uh, the Facebook link goes to some Indian blog. Oh, that may you have might, been. You, you, you might want to check it out. Uh, well, thank you. That's, uh, the main god or something. Well, I did own uh, a bunch of .in names at a time, but uh, I don't think that's me. Yeah. No, oh, no, that's the, the other thing. You, you have a profile. Just a yeah, yeah. Around. No, I know. You, that you that was done. Yeah. I think that was done like 2006 or something like that. I, that, really I, like I can wiki. wiki. I really yeah. like I can wiki. It was a good system. We actually did those at a conference, one of the uh, traffic shows we were at. The gentleman who did the site was actually doing all taking our pictures and doing our calligraphy right then and there at the site wow that was uh, and he did a bunch of us over there at the time really cool guy if i wasn't so old i'd remember his name but i apologize so do you buy and sell sites still or only domain names uh i would say both um my my skill set is being able to find buyers for domain names and being able to buy domains that, that are sellable. So I'd say I would spend more time uh, finding buyers and selling domain names than I would say I spend building sites. But I do build sites. And do you buy sites as well? Uh, yeah. I uh, won't tell you which ones, but I recently purchased a couple of smaller hosting companies that I'm building up as a business. I am not in competition with Host Mania. I will proudly Host uh, Maria. <laughs> Host Maria, sorry. Thank you. I will proudly. You can you can cut that part out. I will no proudly uh, uh, promote Host Maria. I'm just Thank dealing you. with customers that I already have, and I'm doing some local stuff to help local businesses um, get their feet back up and giving them some free websites and things like that. So. That's what I'm doing. But yes, I do buy sites. Um, I, I will buy uh, any valid business that has a future. Um, I am buying sites. That's the answer. So what are the niches you really like? Um, well, you know, it's hard to say because it, it changes. It, it changes so often. I mean, I honestly don't have a specific niche that I, I buy in. I basically look at the site, look at the brand, look at if, if I have some knowledge or if I want to learn something about that area. I would say most of the stuff that I would, would be looking at is either domain or technology related. Um, let's that would say, be... Let us, let us say forums. Forums now are... For, forums are dying. Um, one by one. Facebook groups are taking over. There are many other online communities that are much larger, much faster. And forums are just dying, dying, dying. So I will take the other end of this argument and say that um, while forums may be losing out to Facebook groups and things like that, yes. the um, way that forum groups are moderated, uh, be it plus or minus, is a lot better and looser than maybe, wow. say, Facebook. Uh, you may not get it blocked as easily. You may not have contents or, or things taken out. But in the same token, you may. It depends on who owns the forum and what the moderators are like. But there's still a bit of more privacy uh, on a forum, as far as not being able, not having to uh, put up with the Facebook police deleting some posts or. And the quality of established forums, the quality of knowledge you would get is so much better. Uh, depends on the forum. Again, sometimes uh, that's not true, and sometimes it is true. Um, I find that I'm in a couple of uh, groups on Facebook um, that have huge knowledge in them, and if I post something, luckily within 10 minutes, somebody will respond and say, yeah, this is how you do this. If I'm developing a WordPress site, I'm in a WordPress group, and I need to know how to do something with uh, a theme, um, and I don't know what to do, somebody will guide me in the right direction very quickly. The benefit, obviously, of the groups is you can be found on Facebook if people are looking for a topic, but you can also be much more advertised to 
as well. So you'll see pop-ups from people that if they like your, uh, if they're interested in domains or, or WordPress or whatever, they will pick to advertise to those groups, whereas you may not get that much of that on forums. So uh, I still support both. I still like both. I think they both still have a, a place, um, but definitely uh, social media has, has hurt forums a little bit, but there doesn't seem to be any real uh, people leaving forums altogether. My goal would have been to take uh, a domain forum and convert it over to a social media platform as a group or something like that and really build something there. Uh, okay. Because I always thought that traffic on forums uh, was dropping and wasn't the quality that it could be. Because you can reach the world on a Facebook group. You can get to the world, but they can also get to you. But I don't think forums are, are bad places at all. Absolutely. No, big forums are awesome. But smaller ones, there are so many dead forums. There are well, so it's, many dead forums. it's and I can a lot like, like, sorry, it's a lot like news blogs. Everybody posts an article and posts a news article about domains. They think they're a, uh, a writer, an editor, a blogger. They think they're the news source for everything. And there are some great blogs in the domain space. They know who they are. Um, I think it's, I don't think it's called Elliot's blog anymore, but that's what I know it as. Um, the domains is always good. And Andrew Alleman always writes a good blog. Um, those are the three that I will still uh, look at occasionally. I still get alerts from them. I still check in on, uh, I haven't looked at domain Sherpa in a while, but I still get email alerts on it. So it's, uh, it's interesting. I miss the domain Sherpa days. Cause I think those were, those were the, the most fun that I think I had in domaining was being able to uh, go on and have some fun with uh, some of my peers and, and give some quality uh, portfolio appraisals. Um, but some of them were junk. I mean, no question about it. We used to kid around beforehand saying, God, no, what do we have to review today? So it was, uh, it was trying times and interesting times. I'm sure Michael had to deal with all kinds of uh, lists and filter through what he would bring in and put on, but so what would you classify as the main junk? Uh, on what? Without, without questions. That is junk. That is junk. That is junk. Oh, just if people pick domain. You could tell if people pick domains based on what they like. If they were hoping to sell domains that didn't make any sense, they would have something like, um, I don't know. Uh, it's just two random words that didn't didn't go together, or there was a lot of of uh, things that people have in their portfolio, and I I used to have them too. I think everybody has them at the beginning. If you have them five or ten years later, or three years later, and you haven't filtered them out, you haven't learned anything. So okay. don't go out and buy. I don't know. Uh, there's just so many of them. You can look at any drop list for, today. For example, for example, sure. Oh, you want me to give you one? Of course. Uh, geez, I'm trying to think of it. Um, some people register um, Los Angeles, uh, California, uh, or, or let me give you another one. They'll register uh, Boise, Boise, Idaho. Ca, or they'll register. They just don't make any sense. Nobody's looking for Boise, Idaho in Canada, but there's a lot of them in the U.S. It's the same thing. They're going to register ridiculous things that just don't make two words that don't get together barbecue swimming pool.com i mean it's just and and it's not a joke you can look today even in the drops and, and you'll find hundreds if not thousands of them that are just they just don't make any sense and it's uh i don't know and, and adult ones are even worse uh, but there's there's just so many domains that don't make sense and i don't know what people are thinking or not thinking when they do it and maybe it's uh, like you said before sometimes maybe they come to these domain registers late at night when they're drinking beer and they decide they should that i don't know that 1200cat.com is a great domain and maybe they should register it who knows adam actually i should thank you i think you said it i think that was you who said never buy a domain name once you've had your first beer or wine it may and have been I me. Made it, I think it was you. And I made that rule for my for myself as well. I remember. And well, it's and much I, easier for okay. sorry, it's much easier for me to say because I don't drink. So I would never be that's why I could stay up late and register domain names. But I do know now, as I get a little bit older and uh, and aged, uh, the later at night is a better time for me to have less focus when I'm looking at large lists of domain names. It's much, much uh, more wide awake in the mornings if I have to do some filtering and things like that. So, talking about junk, 
Mm -hmm. Four letter dot coms. Yep. Are they all good? Um, I don't know. I had about uh, maybe a hundred and some out of them. I would love to hear your story about four letter dot coms as well. So I I, um, I had about a hundred and some out of them, or maybe just a little bit less. Um, Ken approached me. Um, he's a domainer. He we were negotiating about buying them. He ended up buying them to me. I sold them to him at a at what I thought was a decent price. And then they went up and skyrocketed and he got a fortune for them. So congratulations to Ken. Um, he's a great guy. And uh, we don't always like 40, 80 bucks a piece. I don't honestly, I, I don't remember. I think it was, it could have been around then, uh, maybe a little higher. I don't know. Ken's a really good bargainer um, okay. and, a, and a great person. And um, I, he got a good deal, whatever the price was. And I know he made a fortune selling them. Uh, do I regret it? Not for a second. Uh, there's a lot of times where I've bought domain names and maybe I have to sell them for a little less than I bought them for because I realize either I made a mistake or it's just not as good as I thought it was. That's part of, of learning uh, domains is that, uh, and that's, that's not really what happened there, but just in general, I mean, I've got domains now that I paid a fortune for that I'm still stuck with. I don't know how long I'll have them, but other domains that I may have paid $20 for or $90 for sell for 12,000. So it balances itself out. Luckily for me, there's been a lot more that I've sold for more than I've paid than less than I've paid. So four letter domain names, dot com ones, which ones are good? Which ones are rubbish or are they all good? So um, because they're all taken, they all have some value. Um, obviously for me, okay. I look at anything that's pronounceable. Uh, so obviously for me, like a uh, constant vowel, constant vowel or constant, uh, whatever can be pronounced. Or, or if it makes sense, like uh, this one that it was dropping two days ago it was, uh, I think it was B-U-L-I or something. I don't know exactly, but it was something like that. And I think it dropped two days ago. Um, really? Something, yeah, something like that would have value, but I, I can't really put a price on it. It's much more valuable if it's got the acronym of a company or if it ends in I for, because you, you can use it as a three letter domain with incorporated, or you can do all kinds of other tricks with four letter domains and three letter domain names too. That last letter um, could mean a lot because it could mean company, it could mean uh, incorporated, it could mean LLC, um, could mean anything. So there are different values uh, to different ways of viewing them. Um, but they're, they're always going to have value. As long as they're all taken, they're always going to have value to somebody. Um, demand is what uh, cr creates uh, the interest. S low supply, it will always uh, mean that people are going to have to bid to get them. But four letter domain names, there are tons of them. And for example, some MQZB. Yeah, see, and some of that stuff doesn't make sense to URI but there's a way to Google acronyms and it'll tell you which company is interested in them and things like that. It'll tell you which company starts with those four letters if there is one. And that's how you decide how to, to do it. Just- uh, Where do you find that? It's uh, one of the Google parameters. I, I, I could figure it out and I'll probably post that as well, but uh, it's a way to, there's tons of different ways to Google uh, acronyms, domains, exact matches, uh, roundabout search. There's lots of ways of parameters using Google search itself to help you narrow down some of these things. So I, I know I've mentioned it in a few other videos. I don't remember exactly uh, what the search term is or how you put it in, but somebody from this video will certainly know. If not, I'll add it to the, to the blog. Um, but yeah, no, there's, there's, they still have a lot of value. Um, but I mean, if there's no demand, the value is less. If there's lots of demand, it's more. Five letter domains are starting to get eaten up by people now as well. So there's lots of combinations of five letter domains, but people don't want them usually with X, with Z, with certain letters that they don't, they don't want them with. Which, and then, okay. sorry, go ahead. Which one is the best alternative to .com? Oh, so the answer to this is very unique. Um, except in the US, the best answer to .com is your country's CCTLD. No question about it. No question about it. Don't think anything else. And even if it's not taken and it's not being used that much, it will be. So it's always going to be your countries are proud of their, their own brand, their own heritage. I can't tell you how many commercials I've seen uh, in Canada about .ca. Um, 
and about, I've even seen commercials in other countries about their own uh, CCTLDs. And you go to another country and you see which countries are using it. You'll become quickly aware of what's viable and what isn't. Uh, the only one that I remember gave me a laugh was the Bahamas is dot BS. So oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know who came up with that, but I think BH would have been better or something. Who sold but, them that idea? Hmm? Uh, probably I can. I don't know. <laughs> they had a laugh. <laughs> Sorry, Bahamas. Well, hey, if it sells, it sells. Could you retell the story? I remember it quite barely about... Uh, the the first two letter domain name you sold, the Canadian one. Yeah, yeah, I can tell that one. It was uh, one of my uh, smartest and dumbest uh, moves all at the same time. So um, it's funny you're really you're really asking me to go back in my memory to pull up some of these things. So what I can tell you was I uh, had P. So remember that company I talked to you about, Power Windows? Yes. So that was one of that was the name of my internet service provider back in I don't know early '90s or, or late to, or, or early 2000 something like late '90s or early 2000s something like that. So that's why I picked up pw.ca. Um, okay. pw.ca was uh, I, I bought it because I owned Power Windows. pw.ca um, I had the com whatever else I think I still have the com powerwindows.com. Um, and so what happened was I put up for sale. I got a $65,000 offer and I was so excited. I hit accept and I sold it for $65,000 later to find out it was Price Waterhouse, the big uh, company. And uh, was. it was a learning uh, lesson for me. Um, I was happy because I bought it for almost nothing. Um, and I sold it for $65,000. Um, and it was a huge, huge sale. It was, it was, uh, I think it was one of my uh, first big sales. Um, and obviously that money ended up getting a lot of it got poured back into domain names. Uh, but it was a huge, uh, learning lesson for me and, uh, helped me get started to know that I was in the right business and I was, may not have been doing it a hundred percent properly. I didn't negotiate. I was just too excited and I just hit boom. I probably could have got a couple hundred thousand, two or three hundred thousand for it uh, had I um, not been uh, excited like I just got a giant lollipop or something. But so the way it goes. It was a good sale um, and it, uh, it's one I will never forget. The domain doesn't resolve. What can I do? What can I do? I mean, they own it. I don't know if they've got it, sold it, whatever, but uh, I know I made my money off it and I can't complain. And uh, $65,000 back then, I was just getting into domains. I was, uh, I'm sure I had young kids at the time and I'm sure it was uh, a very uh, welcome $65,000. So. How many do two letters have you still got? The Canadian ones? Um, quite a few. <laughs> Quite a, few. Uh, quite a few, quite a few. I, I can't, I don't really want to get into exact numbers, but I would say quite a few. And I've got quite a few in a, of other countries as well. But I've also, um, looking at other things just beside two letter uh, domain names. When it comes to CCLTs, there's a lot of other gold in there that people tend to miss because they're only concentrating on the two letter ones. How is the Canadian domainer market? How the, um, uh, community, uh, regarding the community, uh, excellent domains was a woman. Yes, she's actually Latvian. Sorry, who? Uh, Ilze. I think yeah. Ilze was it? Yes, she's yeah. Latvian. Um, she is. Her. She yeah. is an incredible person. I have met her uh, years ago. Her son is now uh, helping to run the business. I met him a couple times. Um, very, very nice lady. Um, incredible lady. I would say there's only. Uh, three or four people that have uh, that basically have most of the Canadian domain market locked up. Um, she's one of them. Um, another one would be Rick Silver, who you may or may not know. Uh, myself and uh, I'd have to think about who the fourth one was. Between us, we have a uh, what they would call in America a shit ton of .cas. Okay. Um, Syndicate. 
No, it's, you it's, it's call it's, yourself a syndicate now. Uh, yeah, the three of us should get together and uh, but but it's interesting because over the years I've bought names from from them. They've bought I don't know if they bought names from me. We've done domain trades, uh, especially Rick and I. Um, he's actually he wanted limo for a while, and we were going to trade for limo, and I haven't done that yet. So I may go back to him and see. But uh, you know, it kills me that the problem is I have buyer's remorse. Where to trade away limo and then see him get like 50 or 100 million from some company would kill me. But that's one of the things of being a domainer. You have to know when to let things go. And that's hard for people. And still, have you agreed on prices? For what? For limo? Domain names uh, with, with two other Canadian domainers. No, we've not done any pricing, price do fixing. We adjust pricing. Uh, that would be only smart between the three of us no yes no we don't you don't the only time i call them Rick each other or, and never. you don't destroy the market and stuff like that uh never never I, the only thing i've been asked to do is uh post some of the big ca sales that i have because it helps the ca market overall but Absolutely. i i can't if they're under non-disclosure agreements like i can say i sold md.ca for well above six figures, that's accurate, but I can't put a price on something like PW.ca I can mention because it was 15, 16 years ago. But uh, my current sales, most of them, big companies want it private. Okay. And I'm not going to say no to a giant deal because I can't publicize the domain name. Of course. In Never. End, it's all about the, the business. But the two sales that I told you about today, um, I'll let you validate both of them. And you'll see that uh, they were real sales, including the .ag that one month later from 90 bucks or 75 bucks sold for 12,000 euros. So all real. And there's been quite a few sales in between that. Some smaller, mostly smaller ones, not, not like the MD or anything. Those come along once in a while. That's it. And the question, although we, we are one hour, 40 minutes in already. Well, I had a feeling this wasn't going to be an hour call, so. Oh, come on, I've, I've, we could go for I've days. So, I have so many questions. Bubbleheads, what happened? Oh, yeah. Are they still live? Um, so I wanted to get my bubblehead. So there the is a guy we doing where it was absolutely awesome. You know, I really liked it. I thought it was cool. Uh, a friend of mine hooked me up with a um, a company in China because he ran a bobblehead company. He was making them. And then um, Warren, who's big in our community and owns bobbleheads.com. Um, he is a, a, a really good uh, fellow as well. I thought I was going to just concentrate on the Canadian market. And then when you had to go through the costs and going back and forth and stuff, unfortunately, this was a project that was part of WebCorp and it kind of uh, flopped just because it flopped because I, again, I tried to do too many things at once. And um, like most smart business people, WebCorp was under its own corporation. Uh, my domains uh, are under another. And so when WebCorp didn't do well, um, some of those entities uh, didn't do well as well. Would I consider bringing some of them back to life? Not really right now. Again, what I've learned is focus on one thing at a time, make it big, um, and then move on to the next. Uh, I used to try to develop too many domains and businesses at a time, and it was ridiculous. It's, uh, that would be one of my, I think, and I'll tell you the truth, my heart has always been in the right place. Um, I've definitely made some mistakes along the way, and I have some issues and situations that I'm going to resolve with some people from the past, and uh, I truly uh, feel bad about the situations, uh, but I'm coming back of my own free will and nothing to do with any lawsuits or legalities or anything. Feel free. Anybody can run a criminal check. There's nothing going on. But it's time to do the right thing, and I don't want to listen to – I won't listen to anybody that's bashing because I'm only there for one reason, and that's to fix uh, some of the issues that, that were created. Paige, if you are watching, it looks like we should come together and start doing domain evaluations. So I can tell you about Paige Howe, one of the another one of the nicest uh, guys awesome guy. I, I've ever met in the industry. I think that he is uh, he's always jovial. He has a nice big laugh. He's uh, I remember he wore a cowboy hat to one of the 
auctions and auctioned it off. Um, Paige was somebody that I always enjoyed uh, talking to, uh, working with. I know back then he was really big into the .la domain names. This was about yes. five years ago. Maybe he still is. Um, but Paige is a, is a class act, and he's one of those guys that you could never say anything bad about. Great guy. He's into emojis. He's <laughs> tons of emojis. Well, that figures because he's always smiling. <laughs> okay, Adam. And then there's nothing. No comments, nothing. No so, questions? No questions. No, there was uh, regarding something that you said, just no way. And, but it doesn't explain. Hmm. It's taken out of conversation. Well. Hey, guys. After five, six years, here you have a chance to ask your question. <laughs> yeah, I Adam, mean. I'm here, not avoiding anything. If you guys want to know something, ask. Um, and I appreciate uh, being given the time to sit down with you and go through some of these uh, things that are memories and some of these that are, are new things and good things. Um, I still love domaining. I think it's uh, an incredible, incredible field. Uh, but you can also lose money quick. So you've got to do your research first. So thank you, Adam. And man, then maybe the last wish to all the new domainers, especially new domainers, something to finish the thought for new yeah. domainers, to, domainers to remember. Thank you. So I, I think the best thing would be to remember to start small. You don't have to go out and invest a lot to get started in domaining. Um, buy five names that you think are good domains or speak to somebody other than me or me that says there is a lot of um, things that you can do with those domains, that they have potential, that they have uh, companies that are interested in them. Only buy domain names that you think you could sell to a company and get other opinions from other people. Set up a little peer group and get, because sometimes we can see things from only our own eyes and we think they're good when really they're not. So get a reality check on what you think is good. And if you can't sell them, after a couple of months of trying the five domain names, you need to find some other tax and talk to some other people. Uh, and you need to figure out if you're buying the right domain names, but taking a chance for $50 is a bad as opposed to spending a lot more money on it. Start small, learn, and then get big and only use the money you make from selling those first five domain or first 10 domains to reinvest back into it. Thank you, Adam. I got I was so happy to, to see you. I even forgot to put up the host Maria ad in the, in the bottom. It doesn't, oh. matter. it doesn't matter. So see you next time. Uh, thank you. And again, I appreciate your time. It's probably uh, about four o'clock where you are. So have a good afternoon or an evening. Thank you. And to all the domaining industry, let us do a great job and educate the world around us about the value of domain names and just domainers you might think that everybody understands the value of domain name me myself personally i talk to lots and lots of webmasters and 95 percent of them haven't got a clue about the domain names and even even worse third or second world countries you can still get amazing domain names. Like Adam said, you can even hand-reach two-letter domain names. I'm not talking about three-letter domain names. They are all around the place. Serbia is absolutely amazing. You can get fantastic domain names. And talking about Latvia, gold in Latvian is Zelts gold. Gold.lv is still in the hands of one of the mainers, and there are no offers. There is no market. And the market is not there just because there is no information and nobody is talking about the value of the main names and the value in the marketing. So, and I'm happy that we can join this part and we can educate the community. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.